So now here, are you ready for the next one? Next step. Okay, first thing I need to ask you, did I teach you how to incorporate your tongue into this movement? Yes, and I find it works best if I rest my tongue on top of my fingers. Because otherwise yeah. my tongue tends to get a little bit lost and confused. Your tongue gets lost and confused. It does. Maybe your tongue should call a cop. Maybe it should press the panic button. <laughs> okay. So that's fine. What you'll notice as you work with the tongue is that the sensation goes first into the back of the throat. And then the more you practice it, you'll feel that the sensation goes all the way to your uh, belly, where ordinarily nausea feelings appear when they appear. Mm. So you're working your entire inner core by using your tongue in that movement. Huh. Very useful. That's weird. That's just weird. Isn't it, though? <laughs> yeah. And this is human beings. We're made like that. This is a weird species, i got to say. We don't even know this stuff. Well, when you experiment with it, you'll notice it, as you're starting with the jaw pulled back and the tongue pulled back, you'll feel where the tongue attaches inside, and it's in the throat. And then as your jaw and tongue, your mandible and tongue, come forward, you'll feel the effects all the way into your core. I've traced it as far as the, the stomach. Uh, I haven't done enough of this to know how far you can take it. it might, you might find that it goes all the way either to the floor of your pelvis or perhaps in the extremes of sensitivity all the way to the soles of your feet. This is to experiment. Well, because you're creating a vibration anyway, so it's going to go through the whole body eventually. If, if you, yeah. I mean, it probably is, but you don't notice it until you're very sensitive. There's that, and there's also that when a person has contraction, tension in various places, it prevents the flow of the movement from going past that contraction. They call it a block or a knot. There's just a, a contracted place. And as those relax and open, then the movements are allowed to penetrate more deeply in, and you'll feel it further and further in. It is a very extraordinary uh, set of movements, these movements. So I told you a little more about the tongue. Now let's go into aiming into those little nasty places in the neck. Okay. The first step is to practice this jaw neck maneuver in varying degrees of turn, head turn. And the way you choose your position is by hooking your fingers, biting and pulling back your mandible, and then turning until you feel a sensation up here that wasn't there before, generally one of contraction or discomfort. Mm -hmm. And then in that position, you do the ziggy zag move from back to front as before. Oh, God. You're going to do the the head tilt in that position? Yes, with okay, the face turned to the side. Oh. Like this. Exactly. Oh my god. And this is what we call more fun than a person should be allowed to have. <laughs> now, I'm, this is the intermediate preparatory step to the Lollapalooza of all moves for this sequence. And before I give you the Lollapalooza, I'd like to have you have practice that just with a simple head turn and doing the ziggy zag movements. Okay. Okay. So I will and, be going this way and doing it, and I will be mm. going this way and doing it mm -hmm. to my easy limit. Yes. And that, uh, but I'll start out doing it the normal way, head this way, and then the back and forth way. It's kind of a sequence like that. Yes, and you'll find very likely there are many positions of turn that light up an interesting position. In what sense? Show me what you mean by that, because there's only, we can only turn so far. Yeah, but you're not turning to the extreme. You're turning only until you feel something light up. Mm -hmm and there may be many. And if you dissolve one, it may allow others to surface. 
So you go after that. And on different angles to the slide? You mean like in different angles or what? Or just well, in this, going farther or what do you mean? In this stage of learning of the movement, the only thing that varies is the amount of head turn to the side. And then you're doing the side tilt movements with the lower jaw, the mandible, coming forward more each time. Right. Okay. There's something that follows this, but we'll work first getting proficiency and just doing it at different degrees of head turn, which you select according to what lights up something either in your mouth or in your neck or maybe even in your back. It's going to light up something distinctly, and that will be your working position. Now, there's one more thing I want to give to you, and it really belongs before we work with head turn, but it just occurred to me as this is developing, uh, I'm coming up with new variations. And this variation is very simple. You've been doing a movement as if the fold point has been in the neck somehow. However, when you tip your head to the right, and you lean onto the left sit bone, you'll feel your whole trunk curves to the right. It, does, it doesn't stop just at the neck. It goes all the way down into your trunk. So as your head tilts and your mandible goes the same direction, your whole trunk curves the same direction by shifting your weight to the opposite sit bone. If you're curving right, it's on your left sit bone. If you're curving left, it's on your right sit bone. This is what we call a very juicy move. And this thing will, again, reveal and dissolve all kinds of stuff that we didn't know we had. Once you've worked with that, then add head turn, as we described a little moment ago earlier. Now, the reason to have you do only one element and not add them all together is because you want good proficiency, distinct differentiation of movement. So if you can imagine, if you were to do the head turn and the whole torso curvular movement, that gets a little complex. Yeah. <laughs> so we want you to have practiced the simpler versions first okay. so that you don't have to put so much effort of concentration into it. It comes more easily then you can explore what happens to your trunk when your head is turned and you're doing that whole torso rocking thing. Okay. Okay. So that's what I'll give you for today. Okay. And the La La Palooza I will give you next time. Okay. And it sounds like you're doing just fine in terms of getting progress in your freedom of movement. I suspect that as you do the whole trunk curve movement, you're going to start feeling it release on the side of your neck more in a way that wasn't happening before. Yeah, I think it's good to be incorporating that because I still have that lower left side and yet, you know, the head doing weird things, sometimes pushing into the left, sometimes turn to the right in weird, you know, unconscious patterns and I, uh, I still have a lot of nerve tension in this area that drives me nuts. <coughs> So okay. I think it seems like something that might address everything. Interesting. Yeah, this it is. This movement, you know, with jaws, is apparently hugely significant. And just to outline briefly, the mandible and tongue are instrumental in swallowing as well as speech, and they correspond to the front aspect of the body and to the body core. The upper teeth, the maxilla and the rest of the cranium are more closely associated with the spinal column and the outside rather than the core. When you have things like a deviation in mandible movement, it corresponds to a deviation in the whole core and the front of the trunk. And a belly button that sits a little bit over to the right. Yeah, generally to the west. To the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's a huge thing. And what's more is that contractions in the core, which are part of the jaw contractions, prevent a person from straightening out from inside. 
So when you free the mandible, the inside will probably start to gurgle and you'll feel changes of pressure inside your trunk and the heart region and in the abdomen. You'll feel things kind of make what I call plumbing noises, gurgling and squelchings as things reposition. And you'll feel the internal stress tensions that shape your posture come free. So we're working with the outside and the inside, right, left, front, and back. Mm. It's huge, the amount of implication that changing the jaws has. And this corresponds to a certain finding in chiropractic. They think it's the neck, as they do in the Alexander Technique. They, per, uh, they attribute great significance to the neck. But I think more than the neck, it's actually the jaws because the neck is connected with the upper teeth most directly and the lower jaw is connected with the core and the soft inside and it has huge far-reaching effects so this is like very interesting stuff we're into right now and I don't know how far you can take it I haven't reached the limit yet but I have found this there's the deepest bone in the body starts behind the upper molars and goes inside and flares out to become part of the temples and on the inside it forms the underside of the brain case where the pituitary gland is seated as a little concavity in that ethmoid bone as it's called the ethmoid bone and the sphenoid bone are what we're working with and I've been feeling those shifting as I've been working this jaw stuff in myself it's really amazing to get the deepest bone there is and it covers a huge amount of change when we change that. Oh yes, and one more thing. In the beginning of this kind of exercise, we're starting at a relatively heavy level of effort because before we develop refinement, we're crude. What happens as we work with this is we can exert subtler and subtler efforts. Less bite, less pull, less forward pull of the fingers. And as we get subtler and subtler, we're able to reach more and more deeply into our core processes. And this is something you can begin immediately, just as you practice, step down your effort with each repetition. Right. Notice what happens. It's really interesting stuff This is that we're getting into here. Step down the pressure, but keep up the movement. Yes, so you're just using a lighter force, but the same movements. Now, you can't do that at the beginning if you're really contracted here because you're not going to be able to let go of your mandible. I felt my mandible let go yesterday in this position, or maybe it was when I came back up, I can't remember, but then I went over to the other side and it didn't do the same thing, so I think I know what you mean. Yeah, so with practice, and when you become able to let go, then subtler movements come into reach for you. You can use less effort and still have the mandible come free. So you just decrease effort with each repetition, and uh, we're still in an exploratory phase as to how far this work can go, this particular kind of maneuver. But it shows great promise. So here's a question. Um, so when I was doing <coughs> doing the movement, side by side movement, I would start mm -hmm. at the back, make my way to the front. I wasn't sure, so I made my way to the back again. Mm -hmm. And then I did. I I can't remember if I did the forward and back movement then, but I thought everything that you teach, you, there's usually five repetitions. So I was wondering how many repetitions to do. So I probably did about three of the zigzag movement. And as you say, it was just, I should have stopped at the front and not worked my way back to the back again. But mm -hmm. do you actually, you know, I mean, you can get there in a, in a minute or so. Would you go back and start again and do it several times, a little bit lighter each time? Yes. And then do the forward movement? The forward and back movement. Or, then, or would you then go to the side and do that, and the other uh, do it uh, on the sides, and then do the forward and back? I'd say the first way. Do straight forward first with the side tilts. Yeah. 
then, then do the mandible straight forward, straight back. Right. When you've got a good result where there's little or no deviation, then you may explore with the head turn side to side. Right. And then with the same amount of head turn, the mandible straight forward, straight back. Okay. And you're, I think you're going to find that even if you're very straightforward with your face straight forward, when you turn your head, you may feel like you're starting from scratch with letting your mandible come straight forward and straight back. And this is the virtue of turning your head, is it shows you stuff that you don't know is there. It's kind of hard to, because you, you got to, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a little like thinking and chewing gum at the same time. No, it's way beyond that. 